Hello, my name is Joseph Ally. Welcome to my channel. And today I'd like to talk about how facts victimize us and how we can avoid facts to manifest everything that we want. So the reason I bring up this video is because um, I was listening to an amazing lecture by Neville Goddard and it talks about how facts overflow the world. And the key phrase that I took away from it was that we are victimized by facts. In our modern day, Everything is science and logic and statistics. And so the problem with that is that when we buy into that fully, we also buy the limitations with it. So the interesting thing is, is that in quantum physics, there's an experiment that proves that whenever we uh, assume an outcome in an experiment, then that will be the outcome. So this was done with particles. So, um, a scientist, the observer, assumed that it would be somewhere, a molecule, and the, the molecule would end up there between two different places. So, they shot molecules through this slot, and it could have two places to go. And the place that it was assumed to go, that's exactly where it would go. So, the, the, the profound um, realization that was concluded by this experiment is that if on a small level, the molecular level, we cannot tell where a, a, a molecule is going to go, or rather that we will predict by assuming where the molecule will go, then the same can be applied to grand scale things. So I want to make a, a very um, important distinction about science right now. Science, mathematics, Statistics, probability, and logic are used to measure and predict patterns. So they're not meant to, uh, they don't hold the laws of nature in place. They're only meant to predict it. And there's a fine difference between the two and a very important distinction in that many people today believe that because science, math, logic, statistics, and so forth, are set in place, and if you're anything like me, then we're taught that that is how it works and there's no other way for it to work. So we attribute the written law to the thing that holds the actual uh, laws of nature in place. But that's the issue. With this experiment that was done with quantum physics, it proves that this is incorrect. That there are some times when we assume something differently then the experiment will go in that way. So this, these patterns that are being traced and these statistics and probabilities are only used to measure things generally and to measure patterns. So when we exert our imagination on behalf of a thing, or in other words, when we try to manifest something or when we do manifest something, we are making those, we are basically superseding the laws of probability, logic, statistics, physics, and, uh, and we are receiving the things that we want. So a lot of us, if you're like me, I have trusted um, a man in a white coat or a, uh, yeah, a scientist, a doctor, whatever, just because they, they have that title, right? And for good reason, because there's a lot of amazing things that are done with science, right? A lot of cures, all these things. But the problem is, is that me, myself, I have not come to those conclusions myself. So if someone says there's no cure for something, I lived my whole life just believing that. Why? Because that's what I was told. But I myself have not been the one that has gone in and tested this myself. And knowing what I know now from manifestation and that our imagination creates reality, I can ask myself, why do I believe this thing is true? Why do I believe this limit is true? Why do I believe these statistics are governing me? They don't. I've proven this thousands and thousands of times. So what I'm asking you is to not to completely abandon these beliefs entirely, blindly, and run towards manifestation or what I'm saying, right? That's not what I'm saying because that's not what I did. What I did was I tested this over and over and over again enough time with that scientific theory um, so that I could prove to myself that those statistics and logic and all of those things 
are not meant to, they're not meant to govern what I'm capable of doing. They do not govern what I'm capable of doing. I've proven this so many times that it is disturbing, right? And so when I did this over and over again, I was able to then um, understand that I have complete and total power over this world. Now, if I have complete and total power over this world, my experience through the act of manifesting, then I can do whatever I want. And if I can do whatever I want, then the laws of statistics and logic and all of that stuff do not apply to me if I use my imagination. So the one thing here that I want to also say is that if I stop using my imagination, if I begin to just live my life regularly as I did like say 10 years ago, then I could probably fall back asleep and retrain my ego to only pay attention to logic, statistics, physics, and whatever have you. Another thing I want to mention is that the laws of nature are not meant to prevent us. They are meant to facilitate us um, with our manifestations. So everything, including nature, will be used to give us the thing that we desire, the thing that we have imagined. So instead of now thinking back on all of your limitations, all of the logic, all of the statistics, gently push them aside for a little while while you test these theories out, that your imagination is the creator of this reality. Now another interesting thing that I want to talk about is the fact that people tend to now start applying laws of physics and nature to manifesting. But manifesting is on the spiritual realm. It has nothing to do with this physical world. So people tend to add um, limitations. They personify manifestation. Like you can only do this amount of manifestations per day. None of that's true. There is no limit to manifestations that you, that, uh, that you can encounter on a daily basis. I encounter sometimes 30, 40, 50. I imagine dozens and dozens and dozens of things per day, multiple in one session of imagining and all of them come to pass. So again, Try to separate human logic. Try not to add a story to your manifesting or how to manifest, right? Or what, what the limitations of manifestations are. Laws that we are victimized by are these facts, the facts of, of, of statistics, probability. When any of these are added into the story, they can actually, they cause more of like, oh, this is hard type thing. But the truth is, is that if you want something Disregard the story completely. All the story is telling you is that you have limitations, that there are limitations and doubts and, and all like anything that will prevent you from manifesting. So instead, when you want something, simply think of what it is that you want. Think of what you want. Don't think about what happened in between. Don't think about what happened in the past. Don't think about what will be needed in order for you to get the thing that you want because none of that matters. The only thing that is required for you to get what you want is to know the end result. That's all you need to think about. If you could snap your fingers and be the person who you want to be right now, what would you look like? Where would you be? What would you have? How would you feel emotionally? How would you look? This is where you start from, the end. Never pay attention to the facts, limitations, logic, anything like that because all they will do is create more limitations logic lack statistics things of that nature and once once you have uh, outlined what it is that you want construct a scene that would imply that you are now that person that you're already that person there's no work to be done in the middle you are now that person that you want to be once you construct that scene, bring it into your imagination and think from it as if you're in it now. What do I look like? What am I saying? What do I hear? Who am I with? What am I thinking at the moment? Um, now, just a, a clarification. When I'm in this scene itself, I'm not thinking to myself, I believe this is going to happen. I believe this is going to happen. No. Because if I'm saying that, then it wouldn't have come to pass. Or in other words, why would I be saying I believe this is going to happen if I'm already there? So we are just copying what it would be like if we were there now. 
We're bringing it into our imagination in first person point of view, always. And we are going to add all the vividness of sensory reality as if we were there now. That's all we have to do. Don't think about logic. Don't think about history. Don't think about your story. Simply construct that scene, imagine it, and then drop it. Carry on in your day-to-day -day life. I, there's, a little, um, there's a little story that I want to tell you. There is a woman who sent me an email. She was watching my videos. She got a DUI. And she, uh, she had a court date scheduled. And then she stumbled upon my videos. She applied the technique of calling her father and telling him that all the charges were dropped. And a bridge of incidents unfold. And first they um, push back the court case. And then she arrived and her lawyer told her that they had dropped the charges. All logic and, and senses and probability would suggest that she was screwed and that she was going to get a DUI. But by utilizing this law of our imagination and disregarding all laws and statistics and probability of science, she had uh, no conviction. So anyway, I hope this was helpful. If you like this, please scroll down, subscribe, hit the bell icon, go to the website SovereignMind.com and stay tuned for more. Thank you.